Hi, everybody. My name is Todd Dammit Kearns. That guy's name is B.B. Kearns. Baby boy Kearns. Welcome to a new edition of Todd Dammit Kearns Talks to His Friends, brought to you by Honor Music, some of my all-time favorite instruments. I got stands, I got harmonicas, I've got all kinds of things. They are wonderful people, and I love them, and they make great quality stuff. Today, my very special guest is a, an old friend of mine, he, we started playing together off and on in a project he has with uh, Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses called Hookers and Blow. I have no idea what that's referring to, uh, but that is a blast to do with him. He has been a long-standing member of Quiet Riot, and it's a very interesting conversation getting to talk to his time all the way through Kevin Dubrow's passing, right up until very recently, Frankie Benali's passing, which is really tragic and really sad, and uh, I got to was lucky enough to play with Frankie on a few occasions, and he was an amazing person and, a, and an amazing talent. Uh, and it really raises a lot of really interesting questions. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff, Adver's Appetite, the list goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Grassi. We're recording. Boom. How do you like that? We got all the we got all the shit talking out of the way before. All the people we were slagging. Just kidding. <laughs> Somebody's ears are burning. They're talking about me, aren't they? No, no, no. We were actually talking about his Randy Macho Man Savage painting behind yep. him, which I think I think you win best backdrop of all time, really. I Yeah, it's it was a gift that came in the mail and I you know, we were talking about it one night after a show and I, about a year later it just came to me. It was a total surprise. One of the nicest things anyone's ever done for me. So it's so awesome. Man. Yeah. I mean, we were just discussing this because I as I was saying to you, talking to Chris uh Jericho, who's really the only wrestler that I know like personally, Canadian. It's a it's a small country mm -hmm. in Canada, so you kinda of, but uh, it really is a bizarre thing, that whole era that we came up on in, in, right. in the WWF. WWF back then. And, yep. um, you know, what that became is, is like you say, it's it's a it's a massive thing now. It's all comes. We, we missed yep. our calling. If we would just sort of spend all of our time in the gym and eating, like, I don't know, an entire cow or something every day, we probably I, could. Yeah. You know what? I, 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 they were like, they were, I mean, I used to go see, like, Van Halen played the same venue that the wrestlers would play, but they were bigger rock stars to me than Van Halen was because totally. they were larger than life. You know, I mean, they came out. I mean, at, at that moment, I mean, when the Ultimate Warrior was at his peak and and, and uh, Undertaker, those guys were. It was a big deal, you know, and and there were these huge dudes. You know, so. And there's pyro and and action. Yep. It's yeah, it's it's totally next level, and and you totally understand the kind of like the the. I mean, and, and actually, that's it's, it brings up an interesting point, because rock and roll, when you say Van Halen or Kiss or whatever, and then you go and see mm -hmm. wrestling, you can see the parallels between those kind of larger-than-life characters, whether it's David Lee Roth or Gene Simmons, you know, it's sort of yep. that showmanship, I suppose, is the word yes. we're trying yep. to find. But, but well, anyway, it, it, yeah. They were, they were characters, you know what I mean? I mean, they, they were... It wasn't just a guy, it wasn't just an athlete, it was a character, he had a persona, and then there was the... The, the 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 rivalry there was a bad guy the good guy the you know it was the whole thing it was it was it was a perfect perfect entertainment for a 15 year old kid and then one of the most fascinating things to me and i brought this up to chris before i go because chris had to play the heel you know there would be junk, giant yeah. chunks giant chunks of his career where he was the bad guy where literally yeah. people come up to him on the street and like cuss him out like how could you do that to whoever yeah. he was you know and then i said well how quickly does it does it turn like how quickly like when you decide when the, it's decided that you're going to be the hero, how quick it goes, dude, it happens in the blink of an eye just because, you know, whatever that is where he jumps into the ring and hits the bad guy right. or whatever. And, and the crowd just immediately, it's like now Chris is the hero. All the, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, and, and it's 80,000 people turning all at once too. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. It's borderline, you know, Operatic, it's the Greek mythology, you know, the whole, yeah, you know, the way I mean, it's played. WrestleMania, WrestleMania three at Pontiac Silverdome, the really big one. I mean, that was, I think, 80,000 people. That one was when, when, when I think Hogan picked up Andre the Giant. That <laughs> yeah. was like the probably the biggest moment of when I was a kid. I can't think of anything bigger that happened, absolutely, you know I mean? yeah. 
Well, when you, you know, consider like you could, we could parallel it to whatever was going on in politics or in whatever, but that, that kind of stuff doesn't matter to kids. We don't, you know, we don't know anything. We're like, you know, we're just, no. what really yeah. is going on is yeah. what entertains us. What's fun. What's, yeah. you know, and that's exactly. what, and I suppose let's, this will be fun because, uh, you know, I think a lot of this, what, what we're talking about really comes into how guys like you and me end up with this many guitars or that many guitars, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's kind of like, you know, you grow up and you, and you, I would assume you're like me where you, I, I, I can't speak for anybody, but for me, it was like, I never really thought about being a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher, but well, I might've entertained some of the things like maybe being a teacher. I think at one point I kind of entertained the idea of standing up in front of people and entertaining them with math or something well, which i would be terrible at but um so the idea of just the fact that we're sitting here you and i talking about the fact that we both play music as grown-ass men is yeah. you know whether we're gazillionaires or owning private jets which we both do let's be honest i mean our, yeah, jets, yeah, yeah. our jets are parked beside each other <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but i mean i really feel like in a lot of ways you know even though as crazy as this year has been you know you have to kind of like and I think maybe that's what it is. A year like this makes you stop and go, hey, man, I play music for a living. Uh, you got a lot going on. You got a lot coming up. Things are good. I mean, things are great. I have no complaints at all. And I thank my lucky stars every day that things lined up the way they did. And, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Slash or, or you know, C.C. DeVille or Ace Freely. And, mm. you know, it, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was a lot of hard work, just like you did, you know, the same thing. But it's we're so lucky to do this for a living especially now because when you know when it gets taken away for a second because you know no. when you know people get burnt out on the road they go oh man I, i'd kill for six months off you know what you're not going to hear too much of that anymore I <laughs> no, not, you know? not, never again will anybody even like test the universe with that yeah. No. yeah 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 so no it's it's just, we're very blessed and to see a lot of guys too like that we, we used to look up to especially in the wrestling world you know where they end up i mean it's it's to to get there is one thing to stay there is another another thing you know yeah and you learn what you know you learn how it all works and i'm i'm very very grateful i'm very actually this has been one of the i i, I don't want to say this the wrong way but this has been a really good year for me you know, i was gonna like, say that you know I, I i totally understand what you're saying and i've had to kind of choke that back when it starts coming out of my mouth because i know it's been an awful year in so many ways oh financial financially it's not been a good year for me no, no, had, no yeah yeah, no, yeah that's true but yeah. in other ways yeah yeah but i think that you know i mean i'm trying to treat the whole thing as a reboot and a relaunch and just yeah, kind of exactly changing exactly. your head what's important what's what, yep. you know, and, and the fact that you have so much coming up and so much going on let's let's go back because this is it's for me it ends up being such a chronological journey and you and I have known each other for quite a while now, not a yeah. long time, but you know, we've, we've crossed paths. I got to play with you on a number of occasions and it's always yeah. a blast. And I love what I love about you is something that I always strive for too, is that ability to hustle, not in a, not in a yeah. cheap or cheesy way, but your ability to kind of like, you know, you're, you're always got something going on. And I always appreciate that. Well, you, you, you said something to me that when I first moved to Vegas, uh, Tammy and I came out to see, I think it was the Sin City Centers at Bampt, and you looked at me and you go, so you're doing that booking agency thing? And I said, yeah. You go, you're a forward thinker. And I go, forward thinker? Hmm, forward thinker. <laughs> and you know what? And, 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 and Tammy, we, we always bring it up because it's, it's yeah, because the way it came about was when, when Kevin Dubrow passed away. Mm -hmm. I, I went from having 50 gigs and a bus tour to nothing. Yeah. So I had to figure out something to do. And I thought, you know, that time, next time this happens, I want to have a, have a gig. So that's why I, I became an agent. Forward thinking. You know, no, you I mean, it. you're the first guy I've met that actually come up, maybe not the first, but in this way. I mean, I know a lot of guys who have other things going on, but it's sort of like mm. when, when you said that, I was like, wow, I've never even considered like, you know taking this hat off and putting this hat on and being like, you know, in a lot of ways we are all such, um, we're in the hands of our agents and our managers. Yes. And, and, and so when you kind of put yourself to be the guy controlling your own world, yes. you just suddenly like cut out a ton of middlemen. <laughs> yes. And, and if you, and you, and I, and I learned that actually from, from, um, from Frankie Benali, cause Benali managed quiet riot from the nineties all the way, you know, totally. till the, till, and and he, I said, why do you do that? Because you know it's a lot of stress. He goes, well, you want something done right, you do it yourself. And you and you you know I you know I trust myself. Yeah. And it for a band like Quiet Riot or Rat or even you know even Poison or Great White whatever, you don't need a team of managers or lawyers in this day right. and age. Right. You need to just handle the day to day. 
And when you whittle it down and really keep it, you know, keep it tight like that, you can, you can function a lot better than when you get too many hands in the pie and, you know, you can streamline it. And that's where I think a lot of things are headed. So if you can, you know, road manage, advance the shows, book the shows and play the shows, guess what? You just saved four flights. You're making more money and there's less room for error. You know, absolutely. And no one's going to care more than you do, you know, about exactly. the situation. Yeah. No yeah. one's going to, you're yeah. actually the feet on the ground experiencing what's happening. You can't go, yeah. damn it, Steve or whoever, you know, yeah. this is, did you see this room or, you know, it's like, it's all you and for better yeah. or worse, but often, you know, at least, you know, when you're there and you're part of the gang, you're kind of like, you know exactly what's happening. And, yeah, and 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 you're gonna make sure it gets done right because you're 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 gonna hear about it. You know, you're you're gonna yell yeah. at, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's now you're true. now you're the one being yelled at rather than doing the yelling at the guy. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So how was it like coming up? So you came up in in Connecticut, which is you know, a, I never I never really think of you as an East Coast guy, but then I, of course I kind of yeah. rewind. I go, yeah, of course you have that East Coast thing. So when you started coming up out there, was there any sort of scene to come up in, or was it still sort of an international type? Thing that you were looking at um you no know, i you know i grew up in connecticut and when i was 50 and i got a gig playing in a bar band with a bunch of older dudes and right. we played Same you know just your typical yeah. your typical covers and then when i finished high school i went to berkeley college of music right That's i got amazing. a scholarship yeah um I, well i was enrolled there i went there for about two months and then i joined a band with sib hashin from boston the wow the original drummer with, with the afro of course and the big and, fur um, vest in the video yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was more of just an excuse for him to just go out and you know jam and whatever. And eventually, I found a band that got a record deal, and we did the whole right. you know yeah. spent a million dollars of Atlantic's money and yeah. you know toured with Sugar Ray and then got dropped to like everybody else. And it's and, such uh, a it's almost a rite of passage, isn't it? That you have to kind yeah. of grab. and no one really understands how how fragile that whole thing that whole infrastructure is when you oh, get yeah. you just because you got the deal. It's, you know, there's a million of us oh, that yeah. got the deal and then there was a change of presidents or whatever or yep. change and it just stuff goes away. Yeah. yeah. AOL had merged with Time Warner at the time. I think it was That's 2001. Right. And, we, and we were, you know, we thought we were going to buy mansions and this and that. Next thing you know, it's like, all right, guys, uh, there's no more deal. Here's your 10 grand for the second album and uh, have a nice life. That was that was basically what we were told. And um, at least you were handed ten thousand dollars. You know, like most people. No, just... that, so that was between all of us and the management. So oh, I got I about eight hundred bucks. Yeah. There you go. Hey, eight hundred bucks. Yeah. That's better than like when you you go to phone <laughs> that that number has been changed or you're just oh, yeah, your, yeah, your yeah, phone yeah, exactly. just stops ringing and it's like you know that yeah. happens all the time, man. It's it's a shady business we 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 you know we participate in. And everybody else went, got, went and got jobs, and I moved to L.A. So that was when you moved to L.A.? Early 2000? Yeah. What was that? Late 90s? 2000s? 2000, 2002, I moved to L.A. Okay. And so I, 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 started, I started playing with a band called Ignite. They're an Orange County hardcore punk band. Right. Um, we toured with like Penny, Pennywise and Hatebreed, stuff like that. Real heavy shit. Cool. And um, I, it was cool, but it wasn't me. I was a rocker. I had to cut my hair, and I just... Yeah, it was my heart wasn't in it, and I just decided I'm, I, you know, I'm going to go back. I'm going to move to Hollywood and start going to hang out at the Cat Club, and the rest is, you know, you know how you know the Cat Club. You know, you, course, you walk yeah. in there, and there's Joe Lestay, there's, you know, everybody. It's like it's I like met. it was like Metal Edge magazine in in club form. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, and, yeah, and yeah. that's where that's where I kind of got in with all those guys that eventually yeah. joined Quiet Riot. You know, that's a fa so. What is the what is the turn of events? How does Quiet Riot come into your life? Like, so just to really kind of, because I know, I've known all those guys in different, you know, I know Carlos and I've known, I, yeah. knew, I knew Frankie, God bless him. I really, I, I reached out to you right away with Frankie, but we'll get more into Frankie yeah. in a minute. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and I played with those guys in, a, a, in, other, in other elements. Chuck, of course, you know, yeah. all those guys. So watching Quiet Riot kind of, kind of happen, um, you know, because it kind of came together as, the original lineup or whatever you want to call the mental health lineup there at one point and then kind of, you know, kind of fizzled and faded away. When I first came down here, Kevin was, you know, he was still alive and still very, very yeah. a big part of the scene. So at what yep. point was the decision to, was it a reforming of the band that brought you in or how did that kind of come together? Yeah. When I met Kevin, they were disbanded and he had done a solo record for Mike Barney on okay. Shrapnel. Um, um, and I, I got hired to do the tour for it. And, um, 
at the end of the tour, he called me and he goes, do you want to join Quiet Riot? Wow. And I said, yeah. And that was pretty much it. That was 2004. So wow, next man, that's, my 17th year. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But yep. what a fun, what a fun run that would be though, because so now who's, is that Chuck, Frankie and, and, and yeah. Kevin? So that basically, my, yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah, Chuck Wright, myself, Kevin, and Frankie was that was the that was the band um, until Kevin passed away. Of course, um, yeah. And and that was Kevin's like really that was like his favorite musically. Musically, it was his favorite lineup. I'm I mean, sure. it wasn't yeah. the most known lineup, you know. But uh, he loved playing with Chuck because Chuck and Frankie are just some you know killer fucking rhythm section. They really and are. um and I he he Kevin with me I was 26, 27 years old. And he, he's, I don't know, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but he said I reminded him of a younger him. He's like, you're like a little baby me. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I heard about you. Is that a good thing? But, but no, he, they, Kevin and Frankie really were like, like, they really mentored me and took me under their wings and, and they showed me the business and, you know, what not to do and like, you know, how things were. They were really, they treated me great. I mean, it was the best. It was better than any college I could have gone to, you know. Yeah, better than Berkeley, probably. Really, I mean, let's be honest. Well, you, oh yeah, Duh. <laughs> that was your Berkeley. Yeah, that was my Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, those two guys. So, I mean, that so. when you rewind and all this, and you really look at like, you know, how ahead of the curve, like it's quiet riot. When you think of like Hollywood and the Sunset Strip, uh, you know, rock and roll scene that happened, you're talking when you talk about quiet riot, you're talking like the like at the very early curve on that. You're talking like Van Halen and then Quiet Riot. <laughs> You're yeah. literally saying, yeah. so when you get Randy Rhodes who goes off to Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Rudy who goes off to Ozzy Osbourne at the time and then returns mm -hmm. to Quiet Riot. But so so when when I there's photos once in a while when Chuck sends a photo and it shows, this is us backstage at the Whiskey in 1979. <laughs> and you're like, what? You know, or yeah. it was some crazy, yeah. like, it just blows your mind that they've been around. I don't know what year. What year was Quiet Riot officially established? Do you even know? Nineteen seventy-five. Damn, dude! And you I were... was born. I I was born in seventy-six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that puts yeah. things in perspective, doesn't it? Wow. Yep. I just saw Randy Rhodes' brother, and we were talking. Um, I, I was out in LA, and and yeah, I was negative one when that band formed. <laughs> amazing, amazing, and, and then, you know. And that says a lot about like, you know, and I know that there was, you know, even, even before, before mental health, there was, you know, different versions or different guys coming yeah. and going as they do in bands. But, but, but to take into a, to really, uh, it's so funny to like, look back because when you think of hard rock and heavy metal, like you and I, as, as, as kids, when that was coming up, Quiet yeah. Riot in many ways was the first band to really cross over like i think even before like say pyromania i think that that yeah metal health was like was like one of the highest charting hard rock albums it was it was the first time. heavy metal record to go to to go number one like exactly like not not rock number one but like billboard number one they beat thriller and uh with the uh synchronicity by the police i mean that's crazy yeah. you know and, and and i mean come on feel the noise was just and it was a hit that crossed over to like Soccer moms knew it. It wasn't just, 100%. you know, it was yeah. it was that big. And, they, and yeah. I think at one point, I think I heard Rudy Sarzo say in the documentary they were selling a million copies a week at one point. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah, it's crazy. So. And it's it's fascinating to watch. And 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 any any band that's been around as long as them, so it, it's always interesting to watch um, whether it's Foreigner or any of those groups. Yeah. The transition that occurs in in a course of like you say, you've been yeah. in the band. You've been in the band. 17 years i don't yeah. know that anybody else was in the band as long as you in different forms I, you know other than I mean, frankie I've, well i mean there's other than there's randy and carlos and the two guitar players mm -hmm. and me they, they've had a lot a lot of bass players right but chuck and chuck and rudy were the main ones mm -hmm. um but yeah 17 years it's i mean i always i'll always be the new guy i'll always feel course, that way yeah. but you know it it's yeah i mean when you mentioned foreigner it's like people people out you know like five years ago you hear people say oh there's not original members it'll never work but i got news to you man we're all we're all getting older and things are going to change and but the music lives on and and it's yeah, i'm not going to say it's inevitable but i think you're going to see a lot more of situ these situations where i mean we we had no choice i mean kevin no. passed away and then frankie passed away and he is they wanted to keep it I mean, frankie wanted it to go on and we're doing it 
and it's working. Well, you know? And I think that I think the important thing is in, in all of these circumstances, uh, like I remember, you know, seeing Skinner, you know, back in the day uh, where it was kind of like, it doesn't matter who's in the original band because the guys that are in this band have been in it for 20, 25 years yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like, that's, that's longer than most bands have been around. So it's, yeah. So, and it is an homage and out of respect for Kevin, for Frankie. Uh, and that goes for, you know, whether it's members from uh, Leonard Skinner or anybody who has sort of passed yeah. on to the great beyond this music, it lives on and it lives on forever and ever. Yep. And that's the, and that's the, the, the craziest thing about music is it's really in a lot of ways, the only way to be immortal because yes. Kevin and, and, and Frankie are alive and well, you know, in yeah. music form every day on, on the radio or on, you know, on our I, yep. iPhones and everything else. It's, and I think that it's, it's important and, Watching Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley quietly sort of transition. Oh, you know where that's going. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Transitioning out of, you know, like behind the scenes into some young guy wearing Gene and Paul makeup. And and, and why not? I mean, if why you, not? I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and the nice thing about with, with, with Quiet Riot, it's like it, it the, the lineage, the way it, it all went down, it's like, it's not like four dudes just grabbed the name and started no, playing. This is not organic. It happened organically. I mean, Kevin handpicked me and he told me, the gigs yours yours as long as you want it you know mm -hmm. i love you you know and, yeah. and it's it's unfortunate the way things happen but it's you know i i told frankie before he passed away i said dude i'll do this i got you i got your back you know i'm i'll take care of it because that that was his baby you know of course was, and and you know? and people a lot of people don't realize that that's chuck you know when when you're listening to yeah. Metal health or you're listening to a lot of the songs on that record i'm not sure how much it was in but i know metal health is definitely chuck yep. Oh yeah, so, yep. So Chuck, in a lot of ways, is the long-standing member of Quiet Riot. Yeah, and and he was there during the band when they were called Dubro, even That's before right. that. That's yeah, right, so yeah. There, there's there's it's 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 all it's one and it's really just it's like a big family at this point now because there's been so many you know ins and outs and it's it's actually it's cool to see everyone everyone gets along. There's no drama. It's not like other bands where there's lawsuits and no. there's only one ver there's only one version. It's all you know. If it's it's all sewn up, and it's it's cool to see that because you know like you mentioned Foreigner and I'm sure there's other bands that are going to be. I mean, I'd imagine Cheap Trick at some point. I mean, you never know. Yeah. They're one of those bands that could do it. I mean, Kiss obviously. Yeah. Um, but people want to hear those songs. And, and, and the other thing that's really weird, it, it, it's a double-edged sword. And I always, it's kind of uh, internally, it makes you think, and I'm sure you'll feel the same way, that everyone's replaceable. No matter how great you are. Of course, yeah. Every, yeah, I mean, there's certain guys that will only be one Jimmy Page or one sure. Slash, whatever. But sure. you kind of wonder, it's like, yeah, you know what? They don't even, you're up on stage playing those hits and you're playing them right. That's what they're there for well i just entertainers you know i just talked to phil x the other day you know dear friend of mm -hmm. mine and uh he had to walk on stage without any announcement like monday it's richie sambora tuesday it's phil x you know it's like i, I think it, i was at that show was oh, it yeah. in LA? I, I don't know LA. I, I don't yeah. know where it happened but i know he walked on stage there was no there was a lot of like you know confused people in the audience looking yeah. and talking to each other and like on their phones like trying to figure what's going on and i you know, so and at the time, if you would have told me Richie Sambora is going to be replaced, it's really like because it was like John and then Richie. You knew Richie's voice, yeah. you knew his whole thing. And yeah. as soon as that happened, I just kind of went, "Well, there it is." But I'll, we've already experienced that with Kiss. We all said, "You can't replace yep. Ace Frehley." They were replaced Ace oh. Frehley a hundred times now. And, you know, okay. yep. And that's the way that I mean, I, I don't. It's not necessarily the greatest thing in the whole wide world. You know, as being a, a Guns N' Roses family tree member, as you are as yeah. well. Yeah, sort of watching the transitions that have happened over there, where Slash is a, he's completely irreplaceable, except he was replaced, you know, for yeah. years, you know, and and I mean, yeah, it, it's not necessarily you know my Guns and Roses, but I don't, yeah, you know, you know as well as I do that there are people in the audience at a Quiet Ride show loving the music, having a good time. They're not sitting there like taking a scorecard as to who's who or what's no. What's I mean, the, I mean, you'll get like the the five percent of the the people on the internet that sure. are like the start that you know, and you know what, whatever that those are the people that I'm playing for. I'm playing for the people that want to come and have a good time of course, and yeah. enjoy the music that I enjoyed, and and the, that's the beautiful thing about this music is it brings people back to. It's not. It's it's a, it's a celebration, you know. I mean, it's it's a life. It's almost like a lifestyle type music because people are now in their forties and fifties. They want to go out to the casino on Friday night yeah. and hear the hits and. 
Totally. You know, as long as they're delivered good, you know, it's. That's it's exactly where, as long as headed, it's yeah. as long as it's quality. That's really all that matters. And and it's not it's not like like you said before. It's it's not like Frankie was opposed to this occurring. Frankie sanctioned this. Frankie wanted this to carry on. Frankie really uh, is is the guy who carried the the the, the torch yeah. all the way, and he continues. Uh, he just handed the torch to you. Yeah. He well, he, 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 not to me per se. His wife's the manager, but basically, True. when he when he got sick, he called me and he said he he said uh you know a drummer. I said. Yeah, I got a, you know, I I got a couple ideas and he, he kind of explained everything and I got the vibe like okay, you're going to you want to keep doing this and right. then there's obviously the legalities of how to keep use in use in commerce so no one else can get the trademark because the last thing you want is four different versions of the same band mm-hmm. which thank thankfully Quiet Riot never had to go down that road but no, he was very very matter of fact because I mean he's got a wife, he's got a daughter and mm-hmm. you know, yeah. he spent his whole life building that brand why not? I mean, if, yeah. if you if you invented something and then you're going to pass away, would you stop making it because you're not there anymore? When unfortunately, you have, you unfortunately, know? Like, you know as well as I do, this stuff is happening all around us. Different versions of things. It's a mess. You know, it's, yeah. it's really ugly, and and you don't want to ever see that happen. So so when Frankie, it's such a tragic thing because I play with Frankie on a number of occasions, and every time he was just an amazing dude yep. and a solid player, dude. Like, oh yeah, we, we would always talk about. We have these conversations all the time when I, when I think about how many different drummers I played with, and mm-hmm. Frankie's name always comes up. We always talk about that heavy foot and and this sort of. We didn't think of as think of him as a bottom guy when we were kids. You know, when we were younger, listening to Quiet Riot, we didn't think of uh, and we didn't think of any of that until he sort of evolved. His his style became more and more. Like it pulled back, it got bigger, it got heavier. Yeah. And, like, and you're like, damn, dude, this guy's got pocket like he, galore. He he was lumped in the eighties metal drummer thing, you exactly, know, the, yeah. the big hair. But he I mean, musically he was very versatile. I mean, he was responsible for the arrangements and very, very cognizant of the song itself and sure. little things that a lot of drummers get obsessed with chops and overplaying and yeah. look at me, look at me. He looked at the song as a whole and sure. as a piece of as a piece of art and a lot of drummers didn't do that and i uh, it was that was the most inspiring thing in the studio because i'd be, I'd be watching him going okay the, the take sounded killer but the way he hit that snare and left that little part out of there and didn't do that role right and let it breathe for the course that's you be one of the most musical per- people i've ever met in my life it was really uh but you had to be there to you know to experience that, so I'm, I'm really grateful for that. The last time I got to play with him was with you. We were playing at the uh, at, at the whiskey, yeah, at the whiskey yep. go go with hookers and blow, dizzy, yep. and uh, and he got up and played, and it was just like magical. You know, it was a really magical night to to get to play with him because we knew I at the time I, all I knew was he was going through some stuff, and, yeah. Uh, it, so was it as soon as he got sick? Was that an, a, a very quick conversation about i mean because every time somebody gets sick you assume they're gonna and we all well, assume our friends are gonna beat this shit you know it's like well when he here's here's the way it went down he was actually supposed to play with hookers and blow a few months later at that rainbow parking lot show and he called yeah, yeah, me yeah. that morning and he said he goes uh my leg hurts i gotta go I, I gotta go to the doctor my leg's not feeling you know he had a mm-hmm. problem with his leg so i said all right don't worry we'll we, we'll we'll get by without you jokingly you know mm-hmm. and um we uh <laughs> I get back to the we get back to the hotel and the next morning he said he goes uh, I don't feel too good and he was breathing heavy and it turns out they went to scan for blood clots and they caught the the tumor on his pancreas and it was stage four and yeah. there is no stage five and it, and that was that was it and yeah it was you know and how long boom. was the battle I mean I it's hard for me to do the math this this last year really messed up my entire sense yeah. of timing now so I'm like. He was diagnosed April nineteenth of twenty nineteen, and he was given three to six months to live. Wow! And he lived eighteen months. Wow! He beat it, and I'll never forget when he first, when he finally came out and told me exactly what kind of cancer he had. I mean, I knew there was something wrong, and my heart was breaking. I mean, it was really, really a a, a bad time, and I all I could muster was, and I'm I'm usually pretty quick on my feet. I, he goes, I just want you to know, I'm, I'm fighting cancer. I said, well. Frankie, I said, if you're fighting cancer, then I feel bad for cancer because he was such a strong dude and had that, you know, and he really did. I mean, he would not. I mean, he got the the shit beat out of him and he still kept going back. And he 
It was unbelievable what he and, did. He, and recorded this and was still working. Like he didn't tour yeah. with us, but he still played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I know. know. So uh, it's such a, I mean, it's so hard to imagine because it's, like you said, that's actually the best way you could have said it. Is if, if anybody's going to beat this thing, you would think yeah. Frankie would. I mean, I know well, Frankie, I mean, Frankie was, yeah. you know, he was, you know, in his 60s, I think, at that point. How, how old was Frankie? Was, yeah, six, I think he was 67 when he got diagnosed. I wow. I, I would never have guessed yeah. he was that old because he, he's another one of those guys that he just seemed eternally yeah. like the same Frankie Vanelli. Oh, yeah. You know? he, yeah, he was, yeah. He was, he was, he was eternally a kid and he also just, you know, he had that. that you know, you just, you just never picture him, you know, take, you know, take, he didn't take shit from anybody or anything. And he really, you know, we all thought he was going to beat it. Every single one of us. Well, even, you certainly even, got that impression. Even, so what? You certainly got yeah. the impression from the documentary that Frankie was, because I mean, the fact that that documentary is so entertaining. Anybody who hasn't seen that documentary should watch it immediately because the Quiet Riot documentary, although it becomes it becomes so crazy with the turnover of people that kind of come and go yeah. after a point. But, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that Frankie, it's Frankie's thing. And, and you, yeah, you kind of has to go a certain way. And, yep. yeah. and I, and even having a sense of like, you want it to be as good as it can be. You want it to be great. So yeah. Um, if it's not, then changes have to be made. That's simple. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and replace, and the thing with, with, with Kevin, Kevin didn't die a parody of himself. Like no. he wasn't, he was in great shape. He just yeah. had a bad night, you know, mm -hmm. that's all it was. Mm -hmm. And so, and he was, you know, it was, you know, there'll never be another Frankie or Kevin, but never, you know, um, it was, it was really tough on Frankie to, to, to sit behind the kit and not see his buddy there. And you know what? I never got it till now because I, we did our first show at Fizzy Pass. I turned around and I see Johnny, who I love Johnny. Yeah. And I started crying. I started crying. I'm like, I see Frankie up on the, on the video screen. I'm like, Okay, this is now. This is happening to me now. Yeah. Here, you know, it. I mean, wow, this is it's surreal, you know. Yeah. And but but I'm really really happy with the fact that everyone kind of pulled together and we're you know we're we're, we're doing it. We're we're pulling it off. There's no drama. It's you know. Well, there's few better hands for it to be left in than Johnny Kelly's, and we all love Johnny Kelly. I mean, Johnny Kelly. Oh, he, you know, I mean, he yeah. was. Type of negative, uh, yeah. It's, he's one of the greats. Period. And yeah. and he's he's a New York hard hitting yeah. drummer. He's not one of those L.A. guys that just wants to go from gig to gig to gig. He, he gets he got it. He was a big fan of Frankie's, and he's a great guy. I love the thing. What I love about Johnny is is the times that I played with him, they'd be like, "There's a drum kit here for you, Johnny." And he's like, "No, no, no, no." Oh, he's, he's got to bring his own kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, his first Quiet Riot show, we had a, a Vista Light bottom. You know exactly. Wow. Brand, you know, and he's looking at it. I go, dude, please don't tell me you want to bring more shit. Come on. I mean, dude, if I could, if I could get away with not bringing picks, I would. You know, you know how we are. You know? Exactly. I don't, Cables. Want, I don't want to bring pants. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's typically Johnny. It'd be like, no, 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 no. This is my drum kit. I've got it dialed the way I want it. It's, you know, it's the color I want. And you're like, dude, just sit down behind this kit. It's already mic'd. It's ready to go. No, tear it all down. You're like, okay, but that's Johnny Kelly, and that's. That's a sign of, like you said, he's not he's not posing. He's a pro and he's a real he, deal. He loves drums. He does. I want to. I want. I want to stay as far away from that amp and that guitar as possible. <laughs> you know? But that's what made, that's what makes Hooker's and Blow so much so works so well because you have you know it's a different personalities and Johnny. It, this is a great story. My mother would come see us, you know, every couple of years. And we your, had your mother would come. Drummers. I love that your mother would come to see hookers and blow. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and, she, and she, and she wore the shirt. Sebastian Bach, Sebastian Bach accused my mother of being a poor, a bad parent. He's like, hookers and blow. You let your kid play in a band called hookers and blow. And you know, but, um, so like she, so after about a decade of seeing us, she meets Johnny and sees us play. And after the show, after the show, she goes, I like your new drummer a lot. I, you tell him, tell him good job. So about a month later, I, I call my mom. I go, yeah, I got three more hookers and below shows. Uh, I think, I think you, they were with you actually. And she goes, is Johnny going? I go, I go, why? She goes, I don't, I like, I don't know how I feel about you and Dizzy unsupervised as often as you go. <laughs> you and Dizzy unsupervised. I'm like, dad, I'm like, I'm like, mom. I'm like, mom. He and Dizzy are adults. He goes, yeah, but it's good when Johnny's there to supervise. That's hilarious. You know? Johnny yeah. Kelly is the supervisor. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. He's camp counselor yeah. in a sense. Yeah. 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 One of my favorite things that I, I've done a bunch of shows with Hookers and Blow. Um, and one of my favorite things was, of course, if those that don't know, it's Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses. It's yeah. yourself. 
Uh, it's lately it's been Johnny Kelly on on drums from Typo and now in Quiet Riot. And Robbie Crane, of course, is is in the yeah. main lineup now, who we all love. Um, and, and, and Mike Duda. Mike Duda. And Mike Duda, I'm sorry, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yep. From Wasp and all that. But one of my favorite things was getting ready to play in the show. And I remember you looking at me and going like, uh, yeah, we're we're contracted for 90 minutes. We'll probably do about 60. <laughs> and I go, and I go, oh, yeah. well, how what? I go, how does that? I'm like mentally prepared to be up there for 90 minutes, gonna do and like looking at oh, the yeah. set list. I go, this doesn't look like 90 minutes. You go, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we Divi and I have actually negotiated. We were, we were opening for Brett Michaels about ten years ago, and Brett wanted to go on. He wanted to play longer, and they, they come in. They go, uh, Alex Divi, would you mind doing? Could, could, you're, you're, we got you forty five. Could you do forty? And Divi goes, How about thirty five? I go, Thirty. <laughs> Do I hear twenty five? We were. We, I'm like, dude, do we just leave? <laughs> yeah. We were, and, and, and the and the guy, he was. He goes, what do you mean? Yeah. We're cool. We're, we want to make the show run smooth. And actually, yeah. we got it down in like thirty minutes. We wow. got five songs. Leave great. him wanting yeah. more. Leave him wanting more. I I, I think yeah. that's there's something to be said about that Springsteen. Like he's gonna yeah. he play for four hours. Who wants to watch four hours of anybody? I. Uh, but I remember like just being kind of like, oh, okay, and it. it it never feels like it never felt at any time that I played with hookers and blow that, that anybody felt ripped off or that it was shorter than it should have been. It was like, it was a great 60 minutes or 65, 70 minutes, whatever it was. And we were you, done. You, yeah. it, 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 whatever we play, it is what it is. And it's, I mean, you never know what's going to happen, but um, yeah, we we're always down for, you know, trimming the fat. We always, we, we've tried to have long intro CDs or do old, you know, little jams. We, you <laughs> sing. we had you sing. I mean, there That's was right, one yeah. night. There was a night Dizzy, I don't know what was he was pissed off about something or he wanted to make a phone. He had to make a phone call and he goes, <laughs> he goes, he goes, do a guitar solo. I go, dude, I'm not Steve Vai. What am I gonna do? I'm like, I, you're gonna get 10 minutes of a fucking shock me, ace freely riffs, you know? And, hey, I uh, love that. I know, yeah, you get it, but you know, that but that's that's the mentality, and that's right. what makes that's that's what makes it so fun. It's not you don't take it we've never had a set list we you know right. we barely you know but we get paid we have fun and it's it's like a i always compare it to like a camping trip or a fishing trip with your buddy you know it, that's exactly we're, what it was yeah when you're yeah. with slash and i'm with quiet riot it's work we're taking we're pros yeah, we take it seriously we're on our yeah. game yeah yeah and when we do this it's like this is our little we're still doing music it's just you know yeah you know no 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 hold no rules just you know have fun. It's nice. It's yeah, nice yeah. change. So, so where where did that all come about? Like, I mean, when you backtrack to, I assume it's you and Diz, sort of. Yeah, um, I went to the Cat Club. It was two thousand three, I believe. I had okay. just moved to Hollywood, and Dizzy was playing with this some some jam band with Joe Lestay. Okay. Um, from Bang uh, Tango. The, 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 from Bang Tango, our boy yeah. Joe. Yes. And beautiful creatures. And, yeah. Yep, and I I got the gig. I I walked in that night and jammed, and and DJ Ashman had just left Creatures, so Joe asked me to audition. That's right. Um, and they were having Dizzy play piano on one of the songs on their new record, and we just kind of hit it off. And I said, "Dude, let's do some cover gigs." And I booked and I booked four shows as Dizzy Reed, and he called me and he goes, "Hey man, can we call it Hookers and Blow?" I go, "Yeah." <laughs> and he goes, and he, and he, and he, we made this logo, and the same one we always we've used since. I mean, that's yeah. it. The shirt is and very popular. It worked. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and it, it yeah. just, it just, it just, it just stuck. And um, we did four shows. We did New York City, actually. Richard Fortis, I think you just had him on your yeah. show. Yeah, Fortis yeah. was like Fortis was at our first show, um, and it just turned into a thing that people. People would come out to jam, and of course. you know we we never made any money for the first two years. I mean, we paid sure. a, we we come up with like we played for like you know Cliff bars and beer, but, <laughs> but, Cliff bars and beer, hookers and blow, yeah. Cliff bars and beer, yeah. yeah. But yeah. we actually, but then, but then we started getting college offers, and we started to tighten it up, and we started to get some different people in the band, and now we've done two full bus tours, and we got a record coming out, and we've had we played with real guys like you and Crane and Dina, <laughs> real guys. You know? yeah. I think oh, you yeah. guys are. Yeah, I, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be qualified as that. That's too much. It's too much pressure. But uh, no, you're, 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 you're actually when, when when we first announced that you were doing some of the shows, they're like, someone goes, he's playing with you guys. <laughs> Like I'm like, what do you mean? Like, well, <laughs> poor Todd. Yeah, 
Poor no, guy. Oh no. Well, it's the same. It's the same as everything else. I was like, this sounds like fun. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. I mean, you, you, whenever you have like a bunch of guys, and it's funny because that 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 model, whether it's the Star Fuckers or whatever it is, where it's it's some guys yeah. do some things, and they're all going to get together yeah. and they're going to play some stones or whatever the hell it yeah. is. It's just a party right away. You just know as soon as you walk in, yeah. song one, it's on. You know what I mean? And that's what hookers and blow is is it's a party yeah now so now where does this all come from or like where is this all spun into the record and all that kind of stuff i know it's coming out through golden robot right yeah golden robot it comes so they out, did uh, made, the backtrack they, they they did uh dizzy solo record yes they did fantastic. Dizzy solo record and we went on tour with the dead daisies promoting that right and right. when we got back from the daisies tour um dizzy goes we should record some covers um and I, so I talked to the president of the label and we decided, yeah, let's, let's do a cover record. I mean, sure. we, we don't, we have, we've never written any songs. So we picked 10, actually, you know, 12 songs, um, that we all liked and we spent a lot of time on it. Do and, you want uh, to say what they are? Or are you saving it for, yeah. or no, just like some for, of them or for, for you? Well, so far we've released Shaken by Eddie Money. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Trampled Underfoot and No Quarter we did with Frankie. Great. Um, oh wow! Yeah. yeah, which are they sound phenomenal. I'll send you those yeah, when we're done. Yeah. Um, we did a body count cover with ice, the, the Ice T band. You no know, way. we tried to ice. Yeah. We did a body count cover. Um, we did Godzilla, the Oyster Cult. Great, great. Um, t- time of the season by the Zombies. Wow. Um, Rocks off by the Stones. Cool. Ziggy Stardust. Sure. Um, and then we've just, you know, we've, we've got a couple other ideas, like different different takes on different songs. But, you know, they're mainly songs we've played over the years and sure. and just ones, I mean, like that feature the keyboards and um, just, just you know, we do uh, BC Boys, Fight, Fight, Fight Fury to Party, but we have Dizzy's wife singing on it. Cool. Yeah, know, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is really awesome. adds a little dimension. And um, it's just, you know, we... So we, is, is the core of the record essentially like, I, I know is is Duda involved, or is, is it sort of Robbie yourself, uh, Dizzy uh, and Johnny? No, it's, it's, or is it it's, kind of a, uh, it's the core. Who? The core of the record is Duda, Johnny, myself, and Dizzy. Okay, and um, a couple other guys came and played. I, 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 honestly, I can't even really remember. Um, so, uh, there's you know the Japanese sisters, the the, uh, the Okai sisters. From mm, LA? Yeah, I, I know they they played. They did Godzilla. Oh, cool. Um, oh. and um, Frankie did the Zeppelin stuff. Amazing. Um, but the, that's the the core of it's basically due to uh, and um, Scotty Griffin played some bass on it. Um, so Crane's not on it at all. Robbie Crane. No, not Crane. On it. No, and we wanted him on there, but he was doing the Black Star Rider thing during the same right. week we were recording because right. we just went in. We 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 went into um, Desert Moon out here in Vegas and just banged out the the skeleton tracks, and then Great. Dizzy and I recorded the the overdubs at home. That's Count you know. Count's studio, isn't it? Desert Moon. Yeah, 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 Desert yeah. Moon, yeah. yeah. I always forget. Killer. It's Killer. a beautiful. We're, 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 that, that's uh, where we rehearsed there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah. No, I've been there a million times. I just always forget what it's called. I always just call it counts. <laughs> Desert yeah, Moon. Yeah, yeah. Count. yeah. yeah. Uh, that's so, so cool. So when is that? That's May 21st, you said? May 21st. And we're going to probably be doing another one, too. Just, uh, yeah. you know, just keep... I mean, during this downtime, we, uh, we're just putting down as much content as we can, you know? Sure. Be, I mean, and Dizzy's got a new original record coming out, which we all played on as well, which is... Very cool. Amazing. I mean, it's really, really well-written shit. I mean, Dizzy's... He's he's out yeah. there, man. He's he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's, a, he's... I mean, he played me so... I mean, I played... I think I played on two or three tracks, and I, I'm... Like he's like I mean is that like is that me? Did I do that? Like right. really, <laughs> yeah. no. His solo really, record, his solo record is really smart, really well written, really a lot deeper than people probably expect. I yeah, think, you know? yeah. It's great. and that and that actually that started in two thousand eight. Um, right. Rock and Roll and Easy. The lead track is Frankie on drums. Actually, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. it's it's that's me, what we me. that's what we played together at the whiskey. You and I. Yes. Yep. And song. um and Ri- and Ford has played the lead on that on that song right. as well. Yeah. That's right. Crazy. Yeah. All it, connected. Now is so just totally to backtrack because I know your connection to Stephen Adler in the in the Adler's Appetite is that mm. that's pre Dizzy Reed, right? So it, 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 it kind it kind of all happened at the same time. It's kind of like you've been floating around the Guns N' Roses family tree for. I mean, years. I auditioned for. I mean, I I, I auditioned for him at one. For point. which position? Um, for the DJ position or? No, for the Buckethead position. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I knew right away how that was going to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, 
I mean, Buckethead uh, is, was, I mean, what a monstrous guitar player that guy is. I don't even know what's going well, on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and Dizzy wanted to bring me down and it was uh, Robin Fink, Fortis, and they needed a, they needed a Buckethead. And I, I think Brain was playing drums and, and Stinson on bass. And I mean, right. I just, I, I played the parts as they are on the record, but they were looking for a whole different thing. I think right. and that's when they settled on, uh, on Bumblefoot, sure. which is he's yeah. sort of the same kind of thing. But yeah. I mean, God, they've had they've had the guys they've had in that band, the guitar players, and just like, mental. I know it's mental, unbelievable, yeah. Yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah. you would have been great because you do all the because when you play the parts, you play them, you know, legit, you know. Like, uh, it's, it was my first record growing up. It just kind of like me too. Yeah. I mean, what's everyone's got that one record that it's in them. They're just born to play it, you know. Like yeah. Frankie, Frankie's is Led Zeppelin three, I guess is the one. Interesting, you know, like. Um, but yeah, that record, I just, I listened to it so many times. I know every little, you know, Nuance. Yeah. every little thing. I mean, yeah. just, it's just weird. And, um, uh, and when, and when playing, playing those songs with Adler was quite an experience because I would always played paradise city and cover bands Yeah, and, and I'd never heard it that way. And, right. and, and I was like, what is it about this? And he looked right at me and he goes, Oh, you know, just come on, feel the noise, slow down. Interesting, and it is. Wow. It, if now think about it, it is with the drum. It's the same beat. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's, it's the same, yeah. yeah. It, I'm like, wow. Yeah. So that's it's really all interesting. These, all these little dots connected to the whole thing. You know, that's the beautiful thing. Um, now, is the Quiet like, Riot lineup as it stands? What are your plans in the future? I mean, I this is the funniest part when we get to this point where I'm like, I've kept you here for an hour or whatever it is. And I'm thinking, oh, dude. Stuff. What's the uh, what's the future look like? And we're like, well, the future probably looks like more Netflix, uh, you know. But I'm assuming you guys are behind the scenes we're, in, in writing. We're recording. we're 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 working. I mean, there's there's talk of doing some new music because Frankie left behind a lot of drums. We got plenty of drums. Oh, amazing! And, oh yeah, yeah. There's there's we could make records for years with amazing. Uh, with wow. what he's left behind. And um, but in the immediate future, right now, obviously the the, the pandemic is a big. Uh, a big factor, but we've got about 20 something shows booked already for next year. Oh, cool. and, uh, awesome. a lot of them are going to play, you know, it's, we did, we actually did three shows this past year. I remember know, that. Uh, yeah. So how did that work? You, what, um, they were, well, was one was, you know, oh, what? Yeah, you did. It, it wasn't, it, we did Sturgis and it was, they, they were very cognizant of keeping things very spaced okay. out. I mean, very, very aware. It's not, I mean, it's, it's weird. I, I think, the pandemic became a little politicized in some of circles. Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when you'd what you'd see on CNN was not, I mean, it, it wasn't like that when you were right. there in person. Right. I mean, actually at one point I noticed CNN was showing footage from 2019. Oh, interesting. Just, wow. Yeah. Cause I could tell well, by the logo. The that makes for a better story. You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah so, of, course, of course. Yeah. But you, but yeah, so no, we're, we're, but you've managed to, yeah. you managed to knock out three shows somewhere. Uh, yeah, the yeah, they were they were they were scattered out, um, and they were socially distanced. They were outdoors; they couldn't be indoors, and they were uh, very safe. Everyone fo- everyone followed the rules, and you know, I think that was the main thing when we got you know when we were going out there. We just said just just wear your mask, stay stay far, don't don't be an idiot. It's, yeah, you know, it's not this isn't rocket science. Okay? Right, wear yeah. the mask. Yeah, I don't yeah. you know it's do whether thing, I don't yeah. care what you believe or what you just. If it's going to help, do it, you know? Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. That's kind of what's weird is like, is, you know, for guys like me, I haven't played in front of an audience in nine months. So it's 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 probably going on 10 months, which is, you know, it's bizarre. I'm, no matter how many shows you've played, I know you've been off stage now longer than you've ever been in your whole life. Because it's we, just, did, we, did, we did a couple of streams. Hookers and Blow did a stream show, which is really right, yeah. cool um, to, get, to get the footage um, for a video. And um, that was interesting. It was done out here in Vegas because um, – Vegas can still do shows. That's Pre- true. Yeah. Prevon Country Club is, and they're going to start doing more. Yeah. So um, we should talk. We should talk about that actually. Um, Let me know. Do, do yeah, you know but, an agent? Oh wait, you are an agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, 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 I actually just played their new for New Year's Eve. I played Old Line Zion with. Oh really? Uh, they, they, well, they have they have they can do a thousand capacity, and the the governor's rule is twenty five percent, so they can do okay. two fifty in there. So as long as they can turn a profit with a cover band and space the people out, they're they're booking. You know, That'd be fun. Ca- yeah, I mean, Cali- Cal- California, they're they're not doing. They don't want anything. I mean, they're no. 
they're no, shut down. It's a whole other thing. But out there, yeah. out here, out here, they, I mean, the re, here's the reality: if they shut down the casinos, we're going to be barfed over the stadium. That's a fact. You Interesting. Know? Interesting. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That, that's, that's a fact. It's a fascinating thing because how long have you been in Vegas now? Uh, I I moved here in 2013. So, okay, so quite a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've seen yeah. a lot of changes, not not just yeah. pandemics, but I and mean, I, and I, but I never really play. I I moved out here and booked. I didn't play in any of the local bands and just did right. buy riot shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I met you at the at the uh, bootlegger, I believe. That's right, yeah. And and I just you know you know the little circles we all run in, but um, I never really was in all those you know like the Sin City centers or any of that. And I. Uh, I think when that comes back, that's going to be a big thing too, because you can do that's a, that's a, a smaller show you can put in a room like that, you know? Exactly. Which I think that's the, that's one of the things that I always loved about Vegas, and people often are like, "So how did you end up in Vegas? Why not Hollywood or whatever?" And I'm kind of like, "Well, the thing I like about Vegas, and you probably can attest to this, is that there's so many musicians here, and every time I walk into a casino." It's probably an old mm -hmm. cliche. People heard me say this a thousand times. You walk into a casino, there's a million venues within that building. Like there's a guy yeah. playing piano over there. There's a duo mm -hmm. playing. You know, some, you know, acoustic guitar thing over here. There's a full show band over there. You know, it's just yeah. like, and all my friends are musicians. We can all live in a yep. town like this and have a life. And, you know, it's, it's, that's and, kind of and, 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 and afford to live here. And, and afford you to know, live I mean, here. Yeah. 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 I, I like it. I mean, California to me, it, the, my biggest thing was the airport. Cause we, cause we only do fly dates and McCarran yeah. is so much easier than LAX. Oh, of course. It just yeah. got, it just got. You know that was that way, and I and I can own a house out here. You of course, do that yeah, yeah. Way, no, you know? and d you're right. Dealing with LAX on a weekly basis would be a nightmare. Yeah, or you know, bi-weekly yeah. even. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's uh, McCarran. At least it's like pretty quick in and out, and you can off you go. Especially with fly yeah. updates, which is which is the future for all of us. I mean, as we as we get as I get older, I just imagine like uh, I'll just eventually sort of settle into some kind of like we fly out on weekends, and that's sort of. That's, you know, that's that's kind of where it's, that's kind of where it's all headed for all of us because not only that uh, as far as you know wanting to be home but buses aren't really cost effective anymore. I mean, I mean the last two bus tours I did, and I cr and I crunched the numbers and got corporate sponsors involved in everything, and it's it's tough to make that Monday and yeah. Tuesday work because no matter how you cut it, it's still twelve hundred bucks a night whether you're playing or not. It's funny that you say that. Yeah. In, in agent speak, Monday and Tuesday, yeah, it's trying to like, well, where are you going to a day yeah. off? A day off yeah. is is money out of your pocket. So you you really yeah, and, and if you're, if you're and if you're on a bus, you're pay, you got to pay the driver and enter and you it's 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 quick. It goes quick. And the and hotel rooms and all the yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It no, there's fast, but yeah. and I think this whole pandemic thing too is going to make people rethink the way they do things and do things smarter. I'm I'm already kind of restructuring some things on my end that I think are going to help. And because you realize like a lot of people have realized I don't have to go to work by, you know, get on the highway every day. I can work from home. I yeah. can advance the show from home. I can do, you know, I can do virtual meet and greets instead of doing the whole meet and greet. We're in the same room, you know? So yeah. it's going to be very interesting for all of us, I think. And the, and, that, the, uh, and the recording process as well. I mean, you, you tell oh, me yeah. You kind of almost don't even have to be in the same room. <laughs> I've done records this year already with projects where it's like none of us were in the same room ever. We're not even in the same city, so it's yeah, you know, it's yeah, yeah. it's amazing what you can do. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I'm that guy. I want to be in the room. You and me, we're playing. I know eye contact. You know, but you know, if it's if it's hot, we're we're deep, we're playing the hand we've been dealt. This is the hand I'm dealt. So here we go. I'm not going to just like walk away from the table. I'm going to play that hand. You know what I mean? No, it's make, the way it goes. make the best of it. And, 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 and who's ever let, I mean, I think it's going to be in a lot of ways. I think it, it's going to do a lot of good because if I remember looking at the 2019 schedule, what was, what was on the books between the Motley tour, the big Motley Def Leppard tour, Taylor right, Swift, yeah. Guns N' Roses. It was pretty bloated. There was yeah. a lot out there. Yeah. And there's only, you know, it was like how much, how many people, I mean, how can, will this all sell? And, you know, we never actually found out because of the pandemic, but I think people are going to be a little more selective now and it's going to be more of a treat to see a show. Because, it's interesting, you know, I, it's interesting that you bring that up because I've been wondering this myself when things come back, do you think it's going to be more, people are going to be more selective or are people going to be like, I want to go to anything, everything. Cause it's going to be a traffic jam of activity. There's going to be five bands in every town, every night that you want to go, well, who do I go see tonight? There's like three three bands that I love. 
because everybody's going to be working. Everybody's going to be out there. Or do you think it's going to be more like, mm, you know, a little bit I more? think it's going to be up. To, it's going to be up to two. There's going to be two variables. I think. I think it's going to be up to well, how the bands are going to have to take some kind of a haircut financially because there's now COVID compliant that uh, a COVID compliance officer that needs to be kind of worked into the budget. Oh boy. And you, you, know, you know, you don't think of it. It wasn't there before. Now it is. Yeah. And then it's also, um, how many of these guys actually go on to go out and tour? I mean, there's a lot of people that don't even want to get the vaccine. There's a and, lot of, yeah, that's true too. There's a lot of, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, some, some of my pessimistic friends are like, some of these acts aren't ever going to tour again. As this year or these couple of years go by, the Fleetwood Max and the Rolling Stones and the the Who and all those older guys, they're getting that much older and we might have missed the window for those last. And I yeah. kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to think like that, but it is a weird thing to wrap your head around the fact that yeah. this was supposed to be the last year of Kiss this year. You know what I mean? So you're kind of like, hmm, how's this all going to work? You know, so their their yeah. retirement gets stretched out another year or maybe two mm-hmm. if, if things don't go yeah. correctly, you know? Yeah. And a lot of that money was already spent. I mean, think about this. All yeah. the all that ticket money from the Motley Tour, that money was spent. I mean, that was there. Yeah. So they can't they can't cancel it because then they got to give it back. It's all so now it's postponed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it's while well, it's raking in crazy interest, you know. Exactly. But, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. I I I I'm very grateful that you know bands like at our level we're you know we're not the massive Metallica level and mm-hmm. we're not playing you know five hundred dollar club gigs. The middle class will be all right because we can always work and we can adapt. We can yeah. bend a little here, bend yeah. a little there. Uh, that I think will be I think will be all right, and and if you're if you play it smart and you, if you think about it rationally and like you know, yeah, don't you know don't walk in there like nothing's changed because it has changed. It's a different yeah. time now. Yeah, you know you you might have to share the drum riser this time. Yeah, you hey might Johnny. Have to. Yeah, hey yeah. Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. You don't, you you're not getting you're not getting you're getting Corona light tonight, not Corona. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's it, interesting it, to hear your perspective because I know you're such a smart guy when it comes to like the bigger picture. You're not just looking at like you know the the band. You're looking at the whole yeah, the, the you business. At, you, you, know? you, you, you got you got to look at everything because because everyone else is they're not looking at the things you're looking at. I mean, no. uh, uh, most musicians will walk into a gig and notice they have the wrong Marshall head. I'm looking to make sure there's electricity and we got paid. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I I don't even want to know what kind of marshal I have. I want to know that that promoter's got the money and that check's not going to bounce and that flight's going to take off the next day. Absolutely. That's the shit you look at. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. But that's you know that's yeah. what and, and that's God bless Frankie he, that he he trained me. I mean, I when I first met him, I was a punk kid. Just you know, I was in Quiet Riot, big rock star, hanging out with strippers every night. And boy, he. <laughs> He he whipped my ass into shape. He taught me because he, he knew he he'd already done it, you know. Yeah, and of course. Like, yeah. He, he I I got the, I, I got you know we're both Italian. I got the, the Italians talking to at the airport a couple times, you know. <laughs> the Italian you talking know. to. I, you know, I wish yeah, I would yeah. be a fly on that wall. You know. Yeah. No. You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember Kevin would be like, "Hey, uh, hey, Alex, uh, you're on Benali shitless. You better go over and talk to him." And I'm like, "Oh, sh-. I turn I turn white as a ghost, and you know, I sit down to Frankie's got that you know that look." <laughs> Just give me a look. Like you've disappointed dad or something. Like, like, <laughs> like, no, no, just like he, like, like just they are, th- those guys had, th- they could smell a hangover from a mile away. Oh, yeah, yeah, I they bet. Just, they, yeah, they just, you know, they, you know, but, but it was, they were looking out for me. They were, they were, they sure. were grooming me to, you know, you know, cause they saw them, cause I mean, I'm 44 years old. I'm a lot of, you know, people my age aren't really into that kind of music so I, I, you know i'm kind of i could i could be their kid basically you know yeah of course so, yeah 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 um and, and they want to see I, you. I, I, I definitely took it i took it all in i'm glad i did you know yeah and they want to see you play the long game not be kind of like some casualty of you know the nonsense yeah. that can happen yeah yeah and yeah I, yeah they, i appreciate they all, that they always and, and 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 that's one thing I want people to realize how how good of like forget about the rock stars how they they're great people I mean yeah. they, I mean Frank Frankie was such a such a great dad and such a great like uh you know the way he handled things and how fair he was to people I mean there was a there was a lot of there's an old saying that it's a biblical a biblical thing basically he would do a lot of things charity wise he never told anybody about 
Yeah. He never wanted the attention. Like he would sponsor kids overseas and Amazing. did these charities. I mean, he helped, he, he rescued animals with my mom and wow. just things. And, but he didn't tell you about it. He just did it because right. it was the right thing to do. And that she taught me, like, you don't do it because for, to make yourself look good, you do it because it's the right thing to do. And exactly. that's so, something I always took with me. So, you know, no, it's I'm really great, glad that, you know, it's a great loss. It's a, it's, it's, but, but like when any, whenever we lose somebody, you know, I mean, you losing him personally and the rest of the world losing, you know, a piece of music and a piece of their, you know, their, their own personal, you know, history when we connect to the music. Um, again, like I said, the best thing about it is that, you know, we can listen to, we can listen to those guys right now. We can sit down and listen to Kevin and Frankie every single day. And, oh, and I, 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 I bet they're I, I bet they're here right now, probably fucking with me somehow. You know, like <laughs> they're, and it's it's weird. I get these little I get these little like I'll hear the song come on the radio at the weirdest time or just little little random things that you know they're out there. You know, it's in the universe, and I'm sure you've had that. I mean, I don't know if you believe in all that stuff, but I, I definitely do. I've had some experiences. You know, I certainly think that there are things that don't feel coincidental on occasion, just because yeah, you're like, ex- oh wow, exactly. This seems a little, you know, uh, exactly weird. I think is the only word. Yeah. But I'm I'm really happy that uh, I, I. The funny thing is now we both live in the same city. Well, we lived in the same city for a long time, but we both happen to be home. Usually in this situation, it's like I'm home, you're somewhere else. You're home, I'm somewhere yeah, else. And now we're all home, but now we really can't hang out anyway. So it's like. We keep trying to kind of like lock up, like uh, let's do some, let's do something. Well, but it's let's like, talk about let's talk about one of those shows at the uh, it's at Triple B's backstage bar and billiards, uh, definitely the Fremont Country Club. They're starting to do some cool shit, and that'd be fun. If any, if for nothing else, it feels good to go out and play. I mean, you yeah, you, you have you forget you forget what you know standing up and playing for an hour when oh, you dude. haven't done it for a while. I was just saying. I was just saying the other day. It's like you, you kind of forget that that's what you do. You sort of like, do yeah. I, Am I? Is this what I do? Or like, are you, I've been calling this, and everybody knows I call it this retirement practice. Like this is what you know. Yeah, you're just puttering around the house, and you know, fixing this, and you know, watching that, yeah. paint that, and then you're like, wait a second, I play music. I want to go out and yeah, play in I, front of people and, and have yeah. that experience. It's it's just such a weird thing. It's. But yeah, that would be a lot of fun. But let's let's keep in touch either way. What we do anyway. But uh, I'm really excited to see it, all the things that you got you got going on. And I, and I like to pay attention to guys like you because you're always sort of moving forward, forward well, thinker. Well, well the public <laughs> enemy, the, the, the whole public enemy thing doing that record this past summer was the ultimate pub, I, you know, forward thinking. I'm like, what haven't I? You know, I mean, I got an opportunity to play on a. I mean, the legendary hip hop record. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, I'm like, okay, this is. This is something different. This is something that I can, you know, get excited about. It's not absolutely, you know, yeah. So that's so that great. Was, I mean, you, you you kind of, you know, like you say, it's like that's a history of of, of music moment. Public Enemy, come on, yeah. that's that's up there with. And I, so many and I love that. I love them growing up too. I was too, a big yeah. fan too. I, 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 I've had this conversation a lot where sometimes you know we talk about great voices and a lot of great voices. It could be a great singer, but then there's a lot of great voices, and I think Chuck D is up there. I think oh Chuck my D god, is, yeah, he's yeah. Like one of those people that when he when he does his thing, it's commanding, it's arresting, yep. and that goes with a lot yep. of you know some of the best singers in the world. I I, I think that that's a lot of what hip hop, not just hip hop, I think spoken word in general, like actors or different people. Some people just have a voice, and you just kind of like, I want to listen to that person do their thing. And Chuck is one of those guys, absolutely. Yeah, totally. You're and totally Flav is too. Let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, when, when, when we did the track, it was really, it was really funny because the the track. I mean, the Chuck did his stuff in L.A. and Flav's stuff was done out here. So right. we're listening to it, and it's the you know, it's it's uh, Cypress Hill and 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 uh, Chuck D's track, and and Flav's sitting there, he's, and he's just listening. He's not writing anything down, and he goes, "Yo." I'm about to put the milk on this shit. I go, <laughs> I go, I go, I go, what do you mean? He goes, the milk. He goes, you can't have cereal without the milk, can you? So I said, all right. I thought about it. No, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat cereal without no milk. No one wants to eat dry and, cereal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but he goes, he goes, all right, here comes the milk. He goes in and he goes, I shit you not. He goes in the booth, puts on the cans and does his little things, his little accents. And, and it went from sounding like, Chuck D and a guy and a drum machine to fucking public enemy. Yeah, a hundred percent. The milk. Yeah. That, that's the milk. the milk. Yeah, yeah. He does his thing. Yeah. Yep. All his stuff is like yep. it's so great. And, yeah. He's and, such a character. And it's and he doesn't and it's all here. He doesn't write it down. He just you know, it's 
it's he, all he, it's kind of drum bass it's a feel thing like he just very, knows where it needs to go yep yeah his instincts where to put it and like where to how long to make certain parts like as a songwriter he's he, I mean, he did the drum, bass, and guitar too. Like, and we, wow. and I, I wrote the riff, and he played over it. And so, yeah, that's so, so awesome, uh, dude. And by the way, thank you for having me on. This is so cool. I'm oh, it's my pleasure. This. Honestly, like you know, whenever I, I've got a gigantic list of all of my friends. You're right at the top. I'm like, I'll hassle Alex at some point, and you know, just and and basically everybody we just talked about. At some point, I love to chase them all down and just sort of hear them because you know. Well, it's, you know, I'm I'm as big a rock and roll fan and music fan as 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 I am a musician. It's just kind of yeah, like, yeah. I love and and, and about right it. and right now is the time to do it because I've had a lot of time to reflect and I'm remembering things and and, and like processing things that of course you know. So totally, you're gonna write yeah. a great you're gonna write a great book someday. See, forward oh, thinking, boy. Alex. Forward thinking. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Todd, Todd, we say that all the time. Tammy always goes, "You're a forward thinker." Todd Kern said, "You're a forward thinker." <laughs> And and, and 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 Tammy's like she goes and Todd's smart, not like a lot of those, a lot of those other guys. God you know? love her. You know, God love you know, her. You know, you know how there's a list of like you know. I like when you hang out like when Johnny Kelly's around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Supervise, yeah. Johnny yeah. Kelly can supervise, and I'm allowed to Todd, hang yeah. out. And yeah, you're you're good. Yeah, just just keep me away from the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Note it's to great. self, I would be honored to hang out with, especially with you and Johnny. That'd be a blast. But all right, man. Well, thanks so much. Say oh, hi well, to Tammy. Don't, I, don't think we're not going to do it again. Of I mean, course, you are hooker. You you are hookers and blow it alumni. You know? uh, absolutely, whether you I'm, like it or not, I'm ready. It's uh, base is right there. Let's do this. I'm ready. But uh, yeah, cool. keep in touch. Say hi to Tammy. Say and uh, yeah, we'll we'll be in touch. I'm sure. I, I, I'll, should I like post about this? How do you want to do? How Go do ahead. you do this whole thing? Well, okay. I'll, I, I don't know. Photoshop. It'll 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 uh, there'll be a whole artwork done. You'll look amazing. It's, it'll it'll be gorgeous. Oh, okay. You wait and see. Cool. I'll send it to you though. You'll 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 get a kick out of that. We haven't really discussed it yet, but cool. it plays later on. We have Richard Fortas and then some other guys, and then you. you well, I was gonna pl- I was gonna plug the Fortas one too because I, I want to listen to it. That, that's, Fortas that's for- today. Yeah, yeah, it comes on today. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, yeah, Daddy. So this, is, this is killer. Yeah. All right. Love well, it. let's uh, let's let's stay in touch and. Um, I will call you about that uh, Fremont Street thing because it is happening, and um, they kind of put me in charge of being the talent buyer for it. Wow! It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of what, 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 do, what would we do? Like they told me, I have carte blanche, bass player, guitar player, but what do we? You know what? What <laughs> so, is it? How is, like, that, that's part of the fun, though, isn't it? Is sort of like here's the clay. Now make that into something. Yeah, you get they, and and they get and they give us rooms at the Golden Nugget. Get we get rooms oh, and cool. they wow. take care. Of, oh yeah, yeah. Huh? It's, uh, yeah, let me talk to them. I, I, I have a meeting with them tomorrow night. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. Let me let me let's yeah. Because actually, I was thinking about you because I was like, who can I get in a band that I know is a ringer is going to show up and just do it. You know, because there's right. certain guys that you know. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, they're, they're going to show up with their drum set in a lift. With, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not going to name names, but a, a certain drummer showed up with his drum set crammed into a, an Uber, <laughs> not, not even broken down. Oh my god, are you serious? I love it. You, and, you, and you know who I'm talking. I, about. I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you might get somebody to job it out to somebody else. You're like, what are you doing here? Oh, so and so couldn't make it. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I, I, I filled in for. <laughs> I filled in for Oz Fox under the pretense that the drummer would go over the parts with me. Then he came an hour late. So I'm like, guys, Oz got sick. We, uh, what's going on here? They're like, oh, man. Just couldn't make it. It was like Spicoli. You know what? Just couldn't make couldn't it, bro. Make. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. All right, man. Okay. Killer. Thank you so much. Love you. And I will Love talk you too, to you very soon. Okay, you got it. Rock Peace out. Big love. You got it.